Okay, so um, it's always a fun change to do what we're going to do today. Uh, it's a pretty common thing. Um, you know, seven out of ten times it starts with the player's grip, but in a nutshell, with your swing, you've got the club face too open the whole swing. So even though sometimes you bring the club face back straight, it's got so much loft on it, it should be going 20 or 30 yards farther. Um, I bet there's times you've hit shots into a green that's soft and the ball just like stops in its pitch mark, right? It's like it, it doesn't bounce forward much. Um, so the club face is just really open and the only fix to that is to twist it closed, big time. But it's going to have to start with a little bit of the grip stuff. So can I see how you grip it? All right. Okay, so take this one off. Okay, so I'd like to see what would happen back here if this thumb went down longer. So extend your thumb. Keep going. Oh, okay, there. All right, and then a little bit that way. Okay, so that's where we're going to start with the grip. If we have to make an error to this grip, it has to err more on this side. Any pain? Any issue? Uh, no. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was going to like snap something in there I didn't know about. So we, the biggest connection to the grip is right here, is this pinky finger around the rubber. So the more that the fingers can go on the grip at a 90, the easier it is for my pinky to wrap all the way around the rubber. And you kind of have a couple of your fingers at a bit of an angle. So how would you, oh yeah, and notice how the thumb goes longer when that happens. Okay, that would be our exaggerated grip. We've got it at totally at 90 degrees, the thumb is extra long, this would be on the side of totally fucking awkward, right? Okay, so take your hand off. Okay, now let's put it back on. Somewhere in between your old one and my last one. Cool. How you, yeah, good. Love it. I'll take that all day, that's your grip. Can I put the other hand on? Yeah. Oh. Which I think was totally fine. Okay, no, don't let go. All right, now, in your backswing, and in the downswing, you need to apply a pressure to this shaft, a twist to the shaft in this direction. So as the club's going back, and you're making a backswing, it has to twist down. It can never twist left. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to get you to twist that shaft out 80 degrees in the opposite direction. So make some practice swings, get a feel of like what the heck is going on here. Don't, don't watch it because it's going to look wacko. The whole time, twist, 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 and even on the way through, twist, twist, twist all the way to the end. Okay, more twist. So at the top of the swing, I want the maximum emphasis on the twist. So if it gets back there a little slower or smoother, okay. Awesome. So give me that same maxed out craziness and hit it. Another one. If the report card said, did the shaft stay twisted, yes or no, that's it. That's all of it. Grip looks pretty good. So if we talk about impact for a sec and what impact is supposed to look like, um, you know, it's this golf club has to kind of approach the golf ball in a manner where the top of the club, the handle of the club, is in front of the bottom of the club, right? And it makes it kind of look like it's leaning forward. So we've seen this on the best players 
and it's mostly because they are turning and rotating and leaving the club behind their rotation. So it looks like it's shafting, but it's created a whole bunch of golfers to try and push this through for too long. But what we're really trying to get to here is for your understanding of the twist is that if I put the club into a proper impact position where the handle's forward and the face points at the target, when I bring that back up this way, where there's the top of my grip, see how it's to the left, it's closed, it's inward. Old school theories talked about trying to open the club face like this and slam it closed. All right, and that was a big power source. And they didn't think that that was so much about the direction that the ball would fly. So a lot of people taught this for many, many years. But all the science now shows us that the best players in the world are taking the shaft, twisting it closed, the whole backswing, bringing it into the ball and letting go of that twist depending on how straight they want the club. Hold on to the twist for longer for a fade, let go of the twist earlier for a draw. And it never floats in the world of open because proper impact has it on the left of the shaft in the closed world. So I'd never want to go through that zero point. That's kind of the idea. So guys like Dustin Johnson. Dustin Johnson takes it to the top of his swing and his glove hand is so tilted this way in order to get that club shaft, club face to twist closed, right? And then so from here, all he has to do is turn his body and that club will always stay in the orientation that he wants it to. It doesn't go this way too much. But the second that the club face goes back and starts to open up, it can get out of control. And so when I say like you were like 80 degrees open with the club face, I was probably right, about 80 degrees. But we can only be about five degrees too closed with the club face because we can only go so far that way. I can go, you know what I mean? So I only want you to like conceptually understand in your golf swing that this club face lives closed. It lives on the left of the shaft. So anything that we have to do in the backswing to feel like that club head is always on your, from your view, on that side of the shaft. Okay, watch here. See, still on that side of the shaft. But when the golfer gets it this way, under, we're in trouble. So the swing we're gonna make is twist the most and hold onto it and don't let go of that twist until the ball So take it up to the top, hold it up there for me. Okay, so don't move. So when you look down, you should be able to see the logo on your glove that way. So that's turned a whole bunch relative to the shaft. So, so turn it. Okay, so see how it's kind of made a little bit of a cupping action here because it's turned. 90 degrees, now it's on top, there we go. That's our grip right there. So this action, if I had to hold on to this and you had to lift up and chop up, chop my hand, okay, that's the action of the wrist right there. Up and down, up and down, right? So here and there. But this way, in order for me to keep the club face closed, I just loosen up, right, really easy. And then if I wanna bring that into impact, I just push my hand forward and there's impact. So we have to start with this cupping action here with the thumb long in order for it to come back to the ball that way. And that's where I'm trying to get us to feel today. Put the other hand on, I'm gonna hold this here. Oh, palm facing me, out to the target. Cool. So you're just gonna start. Yeah. And so 
this is where you're going to find your own swing within my world of twist to the left more than like Trudeau. Okay? Way left. Yeah. The whole way up. Yep. So between swings where you feel like you just make a backswing twisting to the left the whole way, right? There's one backswing feeling. Um, hitting a shot where you feel like you keep it twisted all the way until the end of it. You know, you can do this between hitting a golf ball and just practicing the feel of it. But when you do practice without a golf ball there, try and make it within a golf swing. I like it. Keep twisting it. So because we're getting all this motion for the last one, it just feels like it's moving. Smash the ground before then, even better. I've never seen a golfer have a quick swing with the face closed. It's always open faced. So when you're making your move and you're trying to make your back swing, <clears throat> let it take forever, right? and just keep twisting it closed and closed until it can't go anymore, and that's your sign it's time to change direction. Smooth it out, slow it down. Ugh, slow. Just smooth it out. Long thumb. Push the glove thumb down. Yeah, so you'll notice that when I grip the club, see how much my thumb hangs out past the rest of my hand? Longer thumb. I think that's the only key to the grip I'd like to really talk about. Keep pushing the thumb long. Okay, so big twist. Long time.
Oh, good sound. So backswing stuff, I want you to feel like your body turns faster and sooner than your arms go back. I want your arms to feel like they stay in front of your body, but it's your body that's turning that makes the arms go. Way to go. Okay, one more check on the grip. Long thumb. Good, longer. There you go. So what that does is it changes the orientation of the pinky finger. When the thumb goes down, it changes how the pinky holds onto the club. If the thumb is short, the pinky can't really wrap on. It has a hole up there. But the more the thumb gets long, the more the pinky's in a better spot. That's key. Good, another hand on. That's it. Love it. Okay, so give me the most twist all the way to the top and hold it. Hold it all the way through the downswing. Don't let go of that twist. So I haven't talked about what you're doing in the downswing or anything like that because I think that a lot of the pieces in the downswing, a big chunk of them can be fixed by you feeling like you twist the shaft. So less words, bigger result. I'm going to leave it at that, but the follow-through stuff's important. So when you finish your swing in the follow-through, I want you to feel like that you're really standing taller, you're pointing your arms more at the, at the target, right? Trying to feel like you can get the club to swing wider away from you instead of having it swing around you and close to you. So, we have to try and find a way to time the swing to where the club catches up to long arms right at that stage. And it's going to be a lot of trying to feel like you can turn your body this way and your body that way, but I think that if we focused on just getting the twist of the shaft and getting that shaft to point where you're trying to get the ball to fly, I think that's going to be our big key. Let's work with those two. Something during the swing and something at the end. Twist and point. There. Well done. Great contact. Another one, let it take more time, it's a little quick. Twist and point. Solid, keep going.
Okay, I'm going to count to three. And once I've said three, I want you to start your back swing and hit the ball. Same ideas that you're doing. Twist the shaft, point it at the target. Ready? One, two, three. Who hit their ball first, you or me? Show me the finish. I want your body tall, forward, arms long. Okay? It's going past it. You're going past where I want you to stop. Okay? Yeah, I want you to stop by there, so that means you're going to have to stop sooner in order to actually stop there. Still too high. Stop it sooner. There. That's what I, where I want your finish to be. One more time. Same thing. Okay, hold it there. Now push your mid forward more. There. That's your finish right there. That's perfect. So we've got twist on the way back and then get into that whatever you just did. There you go. The shorter you can feel like you finish, the more you're going to smack the ball. Like it's going to it's going to release differently, so it's going to like compress and hit the ball differently. So, on the follow through, we're looking for the shortest finish of your hands, right? Arms down, not up and not far from here. So, wherever the hands are at, at impact, I want them to stop like three or four inches past there. That's it. So, super short. 